God is here. And those three words are so amazing and powerful to me. In fact, they're so amazing that I wrote a book about them called Three Words That Will Change Your Life. <laughs> if you want to check out the book, you can run over to timeofgrace.org backslash three words. Or you can just check out this series, uh, This Grace Talks, when this idea was simmering in my heart. I hope you enjoy these messages. More than anything, I hope you enjoy the power of God's presence. Remember, God is here. How would you feel if that person was here? Like if you could pick any person on the planet, any close friend, any family member, anyone you have a crush on, uh, your pet, your kid, your granddaughter, uh, your father who passed away, anyone alive, anyone who's passed on, if any person that you could pick would walk into the room, who would it be? And maybe it's that guy from work that you've kind of had a crush on for a while. What if he walked into the room and he looked at you and smiled? Or what if your, your grandson showed up unexpectedly? You know, your daughter lives out in California, but suddenly here he is and he's bumbling through the office and he gives you a, a big hug. How would you feel? What if your dog with the, with the fast-forward tail barked and, and ran into the room at the most unexpected time? Well, I have a feeling that you would feel something. You'd be comforted, you'd feel loved, you'd be excited, you'd be shocked, you'd be thrilled. If a friend, a family member, a celebrity, a loved one walked into the room, it would change you. You see, you and I know all about the power of the right person's presence. So here's my question for you, and, and it's a huge question. I mean, for me, it is the question above all questions. The, the question is this. What do you think of God? Is your view, your mental image of God more exciting more thrilling, more comforting, more peaceful, more loving than your view of that person? Or is he less? So I think so much of what we view uh, church and religion and God in the Bible comes down to that question. Do you have this massive, thrilling, glorious God or some cheap, diminished version of him? You know, I wonder if that's why some of you haven't kind of walked away from the whole God thing. You know, people said you should repent of your sins, but sins seem kind of fun and God seems kind of boring. Or maybe people say that you should go to church to worship God, but if you have a small view of God, he doesn't seem worth worshiping. He doesn't seem worth sacrificing your time. Or if you're dealing with, with pressure at work or financial burdens or problems with your health, if I told you that, that God is here, but that God is small, small g God, it wouldn't comfort you. It, it wouldn't thrill your heart. It wouldn't give you hope and a reason to get up and celebrate and worship and live. And that's why this week, I, I want to teach you one of my favorite sentences in the whole world. It's only three words, just nine letters long. The sentence is this, God is here. But I'm talking about a small g God. I'm not even talking about a technical capital G God. I'm talking about a caps lock, G-O-D, God is here. Because right before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said the most amazing thing. And if you believe in this kind of God, it will change you in all the right ways. In Matthew chapter 28, uh, Jesus said this. He said, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I am with you. Not I will be with you. Not I'm going to be with you if you're good. I am with you always. And if you have a huge, thrilling, glorious view of God, those words will mean everything to you. You know, the other day, uh, some of you know uh, Pastor Jeremy from Your Time of Grace. I had a chance to speak at the church service where he was installed as a brand new pastor. And there his wife and his family were sitting in the front row and I started to talk about the family dog. I said, imagine if your family dog, you know, ran right down the aisle of this church. Somehow he he got out of your home, he escaped, and here he was. And as I'm telling the story, I'm I'm looking at his daughter's face and she's just beaming. Like, just the thought of her dog, her dog wasn't even there, just the thought of her dog changed her emotions and it changed her day. So what if we weren't talking about a dog? What if we were talking about God? And if it wasn't just something in our imagination, what if he was actually here? I hope you can join me on a thrilling ride this week as we explore that beautiful sentence, God is here. So let's pray. Uh, Dear God, you are here. Because of what Jesus did for us, you are not far away. You are right here in this room. We thank you for your presence. And now we pray for your spirit to help us believe that you are God. You're not something small. You're glorious and you're big and you're sufficient. You're enough for our hearts. Without you, God, we're only going to see the things that our eyes can see And so we pray that you would enlighten our hearts, that we would believe that those three words are the most beautiful that you've ever spoken, that you, God, are here. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for investing your limited time to grow in your faith with us. But could I ask you for one more favor? 
I'm sure you're itching to check out social media or go on to the next part of your day, but you could do a huge help for the kingdom of God if you would rate and review this podcast. Just taking a few seconds of your time will help other people to find time of grace, which matters so much to us because we want people to hear about grace, to hear about Jesus, to hear about eternal life. So thanks for taking a little more time. We pray that God blesses you with a great day and we'll see you soon.